Welcome back to History in Motion, proudly brought to you by Midas. We return with action from the pre-66 legends of the nine-hour production cars brought to you by SKF. One of the front-running Mustangs has developed a problem, though. Developed a misfire in the qualifying, so we're at the back of the back of the class. So yeah, it will be quite hard. There's some pretty serious contenders to come through. Purdy's back, um, and uh, he'll be quick. He'll, he's in the front, so he'll be. If I can get there, he'll be hard to pass, certainly. But we'll give it a go, eh? But yeah, it's a difficult one for me, being a Ford man myself, and I've got a Mustang in front and behind me. Never driven the car before, but um, I had. Uh, we did qualifying now. It felt, it felt very good. I'm still a bit tentative. I think we'll put some pressure on these Fords in the race. Study Bakers, Alphas, BMWs and more line up on the grid for this feast of racing. At the front of the grid is Jonathan Dutoy in his 1964 Chevy Nova, with Roy Prando in his Alfa Giulia Sprint putting in a great time to clinch second position. The Mustang of Ferdi van Niekerk Jr. rounds out the top three. The lights go out and Henny Grudewald is quick on the gas as he powers his way through the field to challenge for the lead, running side by side with Dutoy's Nova. The Mustangs of Ferdi van Niekerk and Franco Scribante are hot on the heels as Roy Prando drops down to fifth behind the might of these big cars. There is nothing in it at the front of the field as the top four climb up the hill to a breast, nose to tail. Henny and Ferdy come out of turn five narrowly ahead of the other Mustang and the Nova and try to pull out a small advantage. Down the start finish straight, Franco makes his move on Ferdi, but a miscalculation sees him tap Ferdi and send him into a spin and off the track. Mercury Comet versus Mustang, neck and neck going into turn four. Scribante's Mustang manages to edge out the Mercury Comet and take the lead. Ben Morgan Root is in the We've got a problem with the dip. The inside wheel just keeps spinning. I don't know if it's broken a side shaft or something. They're having a look now. It doesn't, it's not, getting, it's not a, getting any fuel. So there's something wrong there. I don't know. Alpha leads BMW. John Simpson leads Rob Gearing. A great battle is unfolding between these two rivals as they constantly swap positions. Into the final turn, side by side, the BMW and Alfa duel it out. Behind them, Franco Scribante takes the checkered flag in his bright orange Mustang and defeats Henny Grunwald by 0.7 of a second to secure victory. Jonathan Tutoy went on to finish a lonely third in the Chev Nova with a restrictor. Roy Prando takes Class B honors, and Mark Miller narrowly held off Lawrence Davies to secure Class X by 0.3 of a second. We catch up with Henny and Franco. We tried to give it a go all the way, uh, but I think it was about halfway uh, into the race that he actually passed me and did a great move around the outside entering into turn four. For the first time, we got the Comet on close to Franco's pace, let's put it that way. So with a little bit of work, we can maybe give him a go in future. It was a humbling, a great race. Unfortunately, I knocked all 30 out. It wasn't intentional, but I think I was in his blind spot and I was through and he didn't see me. And he closed and I actually slammed on the brake to try to get out of his way. And that's how I clipped him at the back. So he would have been there as well. So I think the next one's going to be an interesting one, yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's kind of harking back to the 60s. It's Alpha versus BMW. We can see which side I'm on. John and I had a great, great battle, eh? Passed each other about 60 times, eh? Something, <laughs> Something like, that. like that, yes. No, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It's, uh, but the Alpha always wins, I mean, obviously. We could have touched, we didn't touch. We were very gentlemanly about it, which is the right way to do historic cars. You don't want to ruin them. The duel resumes in the SKF Legends of the Nine Hour. The lights go off and Franco and Henny accelerate into turn one. Henny takes the early advantage and Ferdi van Niekerk slips his Mustang into third place. The Black Widow with Darby Ulafir at the wheel has returned to the fray after its stiff problems from race one and looks set to make up for lost time as he battles with the Nova of Jonathan Dutoy. Coming out of turn three, Dutoy looks to have problems with the Nova. He's changed the wheels around between the races and this seems to have aggravated the car's road holding. He wisely retires the Chev Nova before any damage is done. Some phenomenal driving is being demonstrated here by Henny Grudewald and Franco Scribante. Such great spatial awareness, racing so close but keeping it clean. Ferdi van Nikak has the best seat on the track watching this great battle in front of him unfold, waiting for a chance to pounce. Unfortunately, Ferdi encountered problems of his own as he left the track and had to retire his Mustang with gearbox issues. This left Franco to cruise through to the checkered flag and take his second victory of the day. Henny had to settle for second and be content with the knowledge that together they produced some fabulous racing at Swartkorps. Confirmation of the results, Franco Scribante won by 1.7 seconds over Henny Grunewald. Davi Ulafir came home in a lonely third, with Roy Prando once again taking Class B honours and Mark Miller, newly promoted from Little Giants, secured his second Class X victory. Well, racing cars like this, I find, is the funnest because they're big cars and uh, they can handle a few a few knocks and dents and uh, that's what makes it so close, you know. The race is everything, you know, that's what we come here for, is not the practice and the Fridays. Uh, getting all the testing done, we really come for the race and you hope you have a good dice on the day and that certainly was the case today. Moving on to the Trans-Africa Racing Pre-66 Le Mans Sport and GT Class, now where Jonathan Dutoy is at the wheel of the Lola T70 Spider instead of his brother Mark who is away on business. Oliver DeLay is showing off his new entry to the class, the stunning grey GT40, which has been a long time in the making. It's been quite a long build. We've battled to get a gearbox. We got a gearbox eventually for it from America. And uh, now it's compatible with all the other cars. And it's uh, going to be good fun. Let's hope Oliver's new steed is all he hoped for as he goes through to take his spot on the grid in fifth place. Jonathan Dutoy leads the field in the Lola T70 Spider, with Ross Lazarus in second and Peter Lindenberg in third. Terry Wilford puts in another appearance on the historic tour and takes up fourth position on the grid. Class C is led by Effort Buerta and Gary Swan heads up the Class Ds. The lights go out and the cars tumble into turn one with nothing in it between the top drivers as they establish positions going into turn two. Detoy manages to keep Lazarus at bay as they exit the turn and Wilford is left to chase them down in third place. Oliver DeLay is holding steady in fifth place while Jeffrey Kruger is putting in a challenge for sixth place with Effort Buerta.
After turn five for the first time, and Peter Lindenberg is keeping Terry Wilford's mirrors full of his blue and white Shelby Daytona Coupe. Oliver DeLay was hot on his heels, but this unfortunate excursion saw him lose valuable time. Side by side they go, not an inch between them, as Lindenberg and Wilford continue this thrilling duel. Daytona versus Daytona. Peter Lindenberg makes his move on the final bend and slips past Wilford to move into third. Cricket legend Clive Rice is up ahead in the GSM dart. He is enjoying being back racing after a bad case of malaria that had seen him out of action for most of the year and only recently has he felt strong enough to compete. The two Daytonas make short work of passing the dart as they continue their enthralling battle. Effort Buerta and Josh Dovey are heading the fight at the top of Group C, but the spin by Dovey was enough to drop him off the top spot and into third as Keith Hinckley goes past as well. It is the Lola Spider driven by Jonathan Dutoy who goes on to take the checkered flag and a rather comfortable win of 2.4 seconds ahead of Russ Lazarus in second. The third place battle was settled on the line with Peter Lindenberg squeaking past Terry Wilford by one tenth of a second to seal the final spot on the podium. Confirmation of the results then, Ross Lazarus had a rather lonely race in his GT40 with a 12 second margin between him and third. After Josh Dovey's spin, Effort Buerta went on to claim Class C honors and Gary Swan in 10th place took Class D. Let's hear from the drivers. Now we had a hell of a race. Uh, into that first corner we were side by side, the two of us. We actually touched coming out of turn two, which was okay because I'm, I'm used to the way his father drives, so it's not a problem. Um, and then we had a mother of a race the whole way. I mean, they, I don't know, I guess at the end there probably wasn't even 0.3 of a second in it. So one of the, one of the nicest races. I thoroughly enjoyed it, especially when I can kick the youngsters behind it. That's worth it. Unfortunately, uh, I was first of the losers there, but uh, it was a good race. I mean, it was, it was a bit of guessing games on where, you know, where cars end up because, I mean, I was hitting the brakes, jumping from side to side on the track uh, and not doing it on purpose, I promise you. But uh, great race. I mean, I think we finished right next to each other on the doors and uh, hopefully it's going to make for a good race too. The lights go out and accelerators drop to the floor. Ross Lazarus pushes hard and tries to find a way past Jonathan Dutoy. Into turn two they go, and it looks like Lazarus has the advantage. Jonathan is determined not to let the GT40 get away from him and is keeping firmly in his tire tracks as he hunts him down up the hill. Great shots here of the Lola as he keeps the pressure on the GT40. Clive Rice is about to have his mirrors full of GT40 and Lola as the leaders come round to lap him going up the hill to turn five. Ever the gentleman, Clive Rice does the right thing, keeps Will out of the way as the leaders pass and Dutoy makes a lunge down the inside of Lazarus and it looks like he has passed the GT40. Fantastic move as he makes it stick. In Class C, Effort Buerta and Josh Dovey have resumed their battle where they left off in race one before Josh's spin. This time though, the Porsche 911 looks to have the edge over the magnificent Lotus Elan.
further down the field in Class D. Gary Swan in his Cobra is battling it out with Dennis McBeath in his little MPT. This really is a David versus Goliath battle. The MPT braves a move down the inside, but the Cobra has the might. The Lola T-70 Spider and the GT-40 come thundering up the hill and lap the Cobra and the MPT who are still locked in fierce competition. Only in historic racing do you get to see such a wide variety of cars racing on the same track against each other. It's really something special. This battle between the reigning champion Dennis McBeath in the MPT and Gary Swan in the Cobra is enthralling and shows just how competitive these classic cars are. It's Jonathan Dutoy though who takes the flag and the double win for the day. Great driving in his brother's car. Ross Lazarus settles for second place, 1.6 seconds behind the Lola. Wilford's challenge with Lindenberg ended when the number 10 Daytona went to seven cylinders. Everett Boerta pipped Josh Dovey to sixth place by eight tenths of a second. Ross caught me sleeping off the start, so he went around the outside of me into turn two. And I sat behind him for a few laps. He's a bit quicker than me, so I was hanging on for dear life. I mean, I was driving so defensive into turn two and then staying on the inside line so he couldn't get a, a run out on me. But uh, yeah, I just couldn't hold him up to hold him on at the end. It was a lovely race. One of the best I've had in a long, long time. The last year we did have dices. You know, this year I had problems with the car, I wasn't on the pace. But today I was back and we had awesome fun. Clean, clean all the way through. It was magic, really, really magic. Quick question, which is the oldest car currently racing in the Mara's historic tour? Find out after the break.